In this video, we're going to become familiar with the Vernum cipher, or the one-time pad, and be able to apply it to encrypt a plain text message. We're going to explain why the Vernum cipher is considered as a cipher with perfect security. So invented in 1917 by Gilbert Vernum, the Vernum cipher is known as a one-time pad cipher. Now, all one-time pad ciphers offer the potential of perfect security, but only if certain conditions are met. Firstly, the encryption key, which is the one-time pad, must be equal to or longer than the number of characters in the original plain text message being encrypted. The one-time pad key must be truly random, and this one-time pad key must be used once and then destroyed. Now this last point is really important and is a reason the Vernum cipher isn't used to encrypt everything all the time. It means that for this method of encryption to be perfect, the key must be securely shared in person. The sender and the intended recipient of the message would physically have to meet and exchange this key. This would be highly impractical, especially if you're sending some encrypted communication from one country to another. Any other method of sending that key electronically, say over the internet, requires an encryption method to make sure that no one intercepts it, and all other encryption methods can potentially be hacked. Assuming these circumstances are applied, one-time pad ciphers offer perfect security. Every single other type of cipher encryption is based on computational security. And because of this fact, every other form of encryption or cipher can theoretically be cracked. So let's take a very simple example and see how the Vernum cipher and the one-time pad works. So, down here, we have the word we're going to encrypt. It's Dave. And here, I have my one-time pad. Now remember, to be totally secure, the one-time pad must be at least the same length as the number of characters in the plain text message. And so here it is. And here we will show the encrypted word. Now, what the one-time pad does is we apply the first letter of our plain text word, so that's capital D. And then for this example, we're going to look it up against the ASCII table and we're going to write the numeric digits out there. Now, to keep this simpler and simply fit it on the screen, I've left out the first ASCII digit because they're all zero. We only need the seven bits. So there's the value for capital D. We then take the binary value for the first character of our one time pad which is the hash symbol, and we write it out here. We then perform an XOR on these symbols. Now we've covered this in another video, but we'll just write it out here. So one and zero would be one, zero and one would be one, zero and zero would be zero, zero and zero, zero, one and zero, one, zero and one, one, and zero and one, one. What we end up with, once we've performed our XOR on the original character and the one-time pad character, is the binary value for the character which we will end up returning as being encrypted. So it's small g. If I continue along with this process, I ended up with this encryption string here. As long as this one-time pad is only used once, there would be no way, if someone received this, for them to apply any form of computational cracking to work out the original plain text message was this. At the other end, all the recipient has to do is apply the same one-time pad to this encrypted text, perform an XOR, and the original unencrypted message will appear.